How much does color matter in business? Turns out a lot more than you might think. And I'm not just talking about big things like branding and logos, but little things too, like presentations and emails. That's because whether or not we realize it, the colors we use and the way we use them really mean something. In an Excel model, color helps us categorize numbers into different groups. On a PowerPoint slide, color can help us tell a specific story. And in marketing, color can make us feel certain emotions. I went down a rabbit hole recently to try and understand why companies use the colors they do and why everyday business professionals like you and me use the colors we do. And let me tell you, the science behind color is fascinating. In this video, I'm gonna teach you all about color. I'll show you how graphic designers think about color and how the rest of us non-designers can use basic color theory to create, organize, and communicate more effectively. Plus, I'll walk through some specific examples from big name companies to show you things you've probably never noticed but that have a big impact on you. By the end, I can promise you that you're never gonna think about color the same way again. Let's get into it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Paul and I'm the founder at Analyst Academy. We provide online courses on topics of slide building, storyboarding, data visualization, and a whole lot more. Our specialty is the consulting industry, but we have clients from a wide range of industries and functions, including finance, marketing, and strategy. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you check out our courses over at theanalystacademy.com. We've also got a lot of great free stuff over there, so make sure you check that out as well. All right, let's start with the basics. Every color you could ever think of can be identified using three dimensions, hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue refers to the color itself, red, green, blue, etc. If you took the primary colors and combined them together, you'd get a second level of colors. And if you combined primary and secondary colors together, you'd get even more colors. Put those all together and you get a basic color wheel. Saturation refers to how strong a color is. Highly saturated color will be very vivid and vibrant, while a desaturated color will be dull and muted. On a color wheel like this, the closer to the center, the lower the saturation, and the further away, the higher the saturation. Then the final dimension is brightness, which also sometimes goes by value or lightness. Just like it sounds, brightness refers to how bright a color is. Add white to make it brighter, and add black to make it darker. On a color wheel like this, the brightness can be adjusted with this slider right here. So why is this important? Well, one reason is when you play with these different dimensions, you can find colors that go really well together. For example, if you find two colors on the opposite end of the color wheel, you can create contrasting colors. Or with three colors right next to each other, you can make an analogous color scheme. Pick a hue that you like and play with the saturation and brightness to get a monochromatic color scheme. There's also triadic, split complementary, and a handful of other schemes with fancy names that make for good color combinations. If you've ever used a palette generator, this is all it's doing. It's using these different schemes to find colors that go well together. And for whatever reason, these color combinations are really pleasing to the eye. Think about some of the companies you know and the colors they use in their products, marketing, and even internal communications. Chances are they use one of these color schemes. In fact, chances are your company uses one of these too. Once you know what to look for, you'll start seeing these color schemes everywhere, at stores, in the office, or even on your own clothes. But of course, there's a lot more factors that impact our color choices. In the business world, for example, colors can have specific meanings, like a positive or a negative value in a presentation, or inputs and calculations in an Excel model. But even beyond this, colors are known to evoke certain emotions. For example, red can communicate urgency or importance, which is why it gets used to capture your attention, while blue can convey feelings of trust and stability, which is why it's a common branding color for banks. Yellow conveys excitement or happiness, and green is often about peace and nature. Even the color gray represents balance and neutrality, which is why you see it used for the supporting details of a chart or a slide. It's just meant to sort of be in the background without commanding too much attention. So needless to say, the color or group of colors that you choose really matters. At this point in the video, you might be thinking that these principles, while interesting, don't really apply to you. And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. If you work for a big company, or even a small one, the branding and color templates have probably already been chosen. But beyond the actual color you choose, how you use that color can be really important. So let me just take this down a level and make it really practical with a few tips. Number one, don't use Microsoft's default colors or any software's default colors for that matter. It's tacky and it indicates a lack of effort. By this point, everyone's come to recognize them, so using them just makes it look like your spreadsheet came from a high school student. Instead, stick with your company's color scheme. And if you don't have one, find complementary colors from a site like coolers.co. And if you're really not sure what color to use for your presentation or your report or whatever, then go with colors that occur in nature like blues and greens. Those are usually a safe bet. Number two, 
keep color to a minimum. Consider the difference between these two charts. On this chart, the columns are all the same color, so naturally we put them into the same group. But on this chart, the columns are all different colors, which just makes our brain work over time to try and assign meaning to each color. It's stressful and makes for an unpleasant viewing experience for the audience. But if we took the same version of this slide and just reduced the number of colors, the slide would be a lot nicer. That's because our brains can easily categorize the columns and understand the overall message without having to work too hard. To do this, pick a dominant color from your color scheme and use that a majority of the time, but then use the secondary color to add a splash of contrast, and use these other colors only occasionally. If you pay attention to some of the more popular companies and their materials, you'll notice they do this really well. Number three, and this is an important one, use your colors with intention. Because whether or not your audience notices it consciously, they're gonna assign meaning to your color choices. Contrast can be a great way to show attention to certain parts of your slide, for example. But by using it, you're communicating to your audience what you view as important. On this slide, for example, contrast is used to help highlight the slide's overall message. And it's very effective. It helps the audience process the information on the slide quickly and efficiently. But in this example, the contrast is just confusing and misleading. It doesn't have a connection with the slide's message, and it makes it hard for the audience to work through the data. Likewise, in this chart, they've used what's called a diverging palette, where the colors represent a spectrum. By doing that, they're communicating to the audience that the colors mean something, with this company on one end of the spectrum and this company on the other. But in reality, the colors have no meaning. So if you're going to use contrast or a gradient or the color red, make sure it means something specific. Number four, keep your colors consistent. This applies to presentations, spreadsheets, and documents at the macro level, where you wanna make sure your template follows a consistent theme, but also at the micro level, when you're deciding what colors to use for something that occurs in multiple places. For example, if you use a color to represent a company or a business unit in one chart, make sure you use that same color for all the other charts, and ideally for anything else, not just charts. This kind of consistency is not only professional, but it makes it easy for the reader to quickly recognize information and data. Number five, consider accessibility. Worldwide, about 8% of men have some form of colorblindness and around 1% of women. So it's important to choose colors that work for everyone, especially if you're creating something you plan to distribute broadly. There's a great article on this topic that I'll link below, along with some useful tools that make this really easy. Number six, use black for most of your text. Black text on a white background creates the strongest contrast possible making it really easy to read, which is why this combination is so common, not just in documents and presentations, but just about everywhere. I know this one sounds obvious, but it can be tempting to use a different color for your text, like in an email or in a presentation. Of course, this is okay for places where you wanna draw someone's attention, but usually you want most of your text to be neutral and easy to read. So black's gonna be your best choice. A major exception to this rule would be if you're showing a presentation on a large screen, in which case it's useful to have light text on a dark background. Something about a light background in these situations just makes the content really hard to read. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this one. And if you have any tips to add or corrections to make, make sure you let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about our courses for you or for your team, make sure you check us out over at theanalystacademy.com. Thanks for watching.